morning, everybody. My name is Damien Coyle, and I'm a strategic account exec at EDB, and I'll be your host today for our webinar, An Expert Guide to Migrating Legacy Databases to Postgres. I'm joined by uh, Simon Anthony today. Simon will be conducting the majority of the presentation, and Simon is a pre-sales uh, engineer with EDB. Before we get started, I just want to go through a few housekeeping items. This presentation is being recorded. We'll be sharing the recording and the slides after the broadcast. The lines are currently muted. If you have a question, please feel free to submit it in the question panel. Today's session is one hour, and we expect the presentation to last approximately 45 minutes. We'll have prizes for the first five questions. Our colleagues in the States call it a swag bag. We just call it a bag of goodies here in the UK. And we'll forward to your address after today's webinar. So without anything further ado, I'm going to hand over to Simon Anthony. Good morning, everyone. I think Damien has um, already gone over the, the housekeeping items. So the, the Zoom recording will be available over the next 48 hours. Um, submit the questions via Zoom at the end, and we'll answer them at the end. And we'll be sharing info about EV and Postgres later. So today's agenda, uh, the theme is uh, break free from Oracle. Um, and these are the uh, items on the agenda in order. We've got first uh, an introduction to EDB, uh, challenges with the Oracle database, uh, leave Oracle for Postgres and choose EDB for your next Oracle migration and what the next steps are going to be. Uh, we'll also, if we have time, um, just do a little uh, introductory demonstration to migration using the migration portal, which is uh, one of the, the first steps you can do to assess uh, a migration. So this is a slide um, from IDC, which you've reproduced here. And principally what it's showing um, is that the when we refer, refer to uh, legacy uh, databases, what we really mean uh, in terms of market share is Oracle. Um, so the, the primary uh, move from uh, proprietary databases to open source is moving away from Oracle, uh, principally because of the, uh, the size of the market share. But equally, um, that also applies to the other um, databases that uh, are also prevalent and can be considered legacy when moving to open source, uh, the likes of um, Microsoft SQL Server and DB2, for example. <clears throat> so why leave Oracle? Obviously, the database is, is known and, and loved by many and is, is a good product, but um, the price is prohibitively high. Um, many options and features that we take for granted are, are extra paid options, even on the Enterprise Edition, for example, partitioning. Um, and many of these features um, and now, uh, things like the advanced security option, um, many of those features are, are commoditized and, and standard um, in uh, many database products, uh, not just the open source ones. Also, one of the considerations relating to price is the, the, the painful contract terms. Um, the licensing arrangements are very complicated in terms of the use um, and the uh, core factoring. And they can be often interpreted uh, in a in a uh, on a whim and in a way that is um, uh, is less optimal for the customer. For example, um, the situation about pricing for um, virtual CPUs, or indeed for moving uh, and using your licenses um, on database uh, instances in uh, competitive cloud environments, AWS, Azure, Google. Uh, compared to Oracle Cloud. Uh, one of the other motiv large motivations for moving away from um, proprietary technologies, and proprietary includes databases in that, is that many businesses are opt adopting an open source strategy. Um, so it's typically seen now that 70% of new apps are um, uh, where they use a database, 70% uh, of them are using an open source database. Um, uh, MySQL has been a share of that. Also, obviously, Postgres is now um, 
taking up the reins and running with that uh, as being the primary open source database of choice. This allows uh, you know businesses to take control um, uh, of their, their their product development. They're not tied to uh, a particular company's um, direction. Um, they are free to move um, uh, between different platforms, um, and this allows increase of innovation uh, and also reduces the the risks of getting locked into a, a vendor um, with the incumbent and in inherent costs that that. Uh, involves. Uh, along with the move to open source, we're also seeing um, a, uh, a rush to the cloud. Um, many companies have a cloud strategy, many um, governmental and um, public sector um, organizations also have a cloud as well as an open source uh, strategy or even philosophy. Uh, and along with this, um, uh, containerization is is one of the technologies of the future. <clears throat> so, containerization is often uh, coupled with um, open source and the DevOps initiative. And when combined, ultimately with cloud, um, allows uh, complete independence from um, any particular platform or indeed any any cloud um, specific um, vendor. <clears throat> So what obstacles exist um, for migrations? Well, first of all, migrations uh, can be hard. Um, so there's a lot of assessment to do across the board um, from all the way across uh, the infrastructure, the database, uh, the applications accessing it, um, and the integrations with other platforms. <coughs> um, We've also mentioned the fact that um, in this equation, um, Oracle licenses uh, and their licensing uh, model and practices are, are very complicated, um, <clears throat> such so that um, there are several organizations, some of the, uh, the who, whom we partner with, um, whose sole um, business uh, reason is to help customers um, either extricate or minimize their Oracle licensing costs by interpreting um, uh, and negotiating on, on, on Oracle licenses. Um, and then with the um, cost of, uh, with, with, with the licensing scheme as well, Oracle have a, a system of auditing, uh, which is highly disruptive. Um, and I think everybody probably knows that the end user, uh, sorry, the um, universe, uh, the Oracle ULA is anything but, and is really rather a, um, a clever device for uh, trapping you into using more than you thought you probably would have done. Having said that, many businesses are still reluctant to move from Oracle because they have invested um, lots, not just the effort of developing the application and running their, their operations on an Oracle database, uh, but invested in lots of Oracle training and they have lots of um, uh, in-house skills in terms of development and also um, not forgetting DBA skills who um, have grown used to um, running, managing, tuning, uh, building and um, administering the, uh, not just the database, but the, the whole infrastructure and ecosystem around uh, Oracle and its applications. Some things that are specifically difficult to move from Oracle um, are <clears throat> where, um, for example, eBusiness Suite, um, which not only does it use specific features that uh, aren't found uh, in other databases um, and that probably won't ever be found for whatever reason, um, and also contractually that eBusiness Suite and Oracle applications um, must run against an Oracle database. So it's, it, it's infeasible to migrate uh, one without the other in those kind of scenarios. So what are the considerations of a migration? Um, well, first of all, uh, schemas, object and code. Uh, what, are the, what are the differences in data types between um, Oracle and Postgres uh, and different syntactical uh, elements in, in, in the DDL? Um, 
and what do you do to surmount those compatibilities? Um, this is probably actually the, um, the easiest area to consider because there are um, pathways to uh, navigate in, in that, that, that area. Um, then moving on to data, the, 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 you, one might think initially, okay, you just migrate the data from one database to another and that's it. Um, we, we carry on now with the new system. But in many cases, um, for large databases, um, this has to be done in the context of uh, uh, deliverance of some kind of service level. Um, so if you have terabytes plus of data, it becomes then um, uh, less likely that you can um, do a migration uh, and change over and switch over within the um, within the space of a weekend. <clears throat> so this is where other tools can help in that scenario. For example, um, uh, EDB's replication server, um, you can uh, implement a change data capture mechanism so that you do the migration, uh, you migrate the data from um, and, and the whole schema including the packages and procedures and so forth um, from the source database to the target Postgres database and that takes uh, that may take say a number of days if it's a very large database and then we use um, replication server to then um, keep the source database and target database um, up to sync uh, with um, with each other and then it, that then gives the window of opportunity to do a, a cut over, switch over in a very small space of time um, because the, the bulk of the data uh, doesn't have to be migrated in, in the, uh, the actual switch over. Other considerations that uh, need to be thought about um, are our infrastructure. Um, so this needs a great deal of thought um, before uh, undertaking a migration. Uh, so you might have particular um, security requirements, um, even compliance um, elements of that. Um, and it may be that you have to fit into uh, the authentication mechanisms, for example, Active Directory um, of that uh, infrastructure. Um, and that may have been done a, a, particular, a particular way. So those have to be considered. Um, uh, strategies for, for database optimization um, will also uh, figure in that. So we asked um, customers and prospects what were the biggest obstacles in migrating Oracle databases to Postgres. Uh, surprisingly, um, cost is a very small one because um, you save so much money migrating away from Oracle that cost becomes much less of a factor. Um, migrating the data definitions uh, appears next um, uh, and um, that is uh, generally less of, a, of an issue when migrating to advanced server. Um, again, stored procedures will largely migrate um, to advanced server and one element that isn't um, immediately apparent in many cases is the um, the need to move from proprietary drivers. Um, so JDBC and OCI drivers that use um, specific features to Oracle um, in our parameters, for example, in, in, in procedures. Um, these needed to migrate to, to, post, to PostgreSQL um, open source drivers. Um, EDB also provide um, OCI drivers and JDBC drivers that are compatible with, um, with, with, with their Oracle counterparts. And then migrating the data itself. Again, this, is, this, is a, you know, this comes down to the logistical uh, elements that were, were highlighted um, in the previous slides. So leaving Oracle for Postgres. <clears throat> These are the top five reasons in various surveys um, that enterprises leave Oracle for Postgres. Uh, number one, as you might imagine, is that Postgres offers significant cost savings compared to Oracle, uh, and not just the, uh, um, the cost savings um, 
uh, up front, but also the um, uh, unforeseen cost surprises that come with, with audits, um, also the capital costs and the costs where um, you get a different uh, refactorization of uh, CPU, for example, if you were to change platform or the costs of, um, of migrating to uh, cloud. Uh, one of the great motivations for open source as well is that you can avoid vendor locking. You're in a truly open platform and um, you're not stuck with a particular vendor who can rely on your um, revenue stream from, from here to eternity. Uh, again, it's easier to, to re-platform uh, from cloud to cloud uh, on-premises, containers, um, platforms, um, because you're not hindered by any um, restrictive licensing practices. Also, we see that the, the major innovation these days, the, the software as a service uh, industry that's grown up, is uh, innovation um, in open source. Um, and then this leads to a smoother path to uh, digitalization of businesses and uh, transformation to use um, modern uh, methods and deployments. So why choose EDB for your Oracle migration? Well, we have a great deal of experience in this area. We have over 300 um, customers uh, migrated. Um, so we have the knowledge and expertise to help you re reduce costs uh, and mitigate the risks of, of migration. Um, the advanced server option that we have is deep compatibility with, uh, with Oracle, um, not just in terms of um, compatibility uh, with um, uh, tables, views, but also uh, with stored objects, packages, procedures, and then compatibility um, with tools that are familiar uh, to many uh, database administrators. So uh, EDB Plus is, is a, 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 a counterpart for, for SQL Plus, um, the EDB Loader, so one of the um, tools that's kind of absent from, from Postgres for, for, for bulk loading, um, familiar to anyone that wants to migrate uh, large amounts of data to Oracle. Um, and then uh, Postgres Enterprise Manager um, is very similar to Oracle um, uh, Enterprise Manager and has uh, tools in for um, tuning advice and um, index advice and, and, and monitoring wait states uh, for, for tuning purposes. <clears throat> So we also offer uh, comprehensive migration tools and services. We're gonna have a look at the, the migration portal uh, later on. Um, but there's also uh, a migration toolkit, which does a, um, uh, which is what you're likely to use for the actual job of doing the migration. Uh, and that allows you also to do uh, migrations, um, availing yourself with the um, OCI connection method. Uh, and underlying the Postgres copy, um, which greatly speeds up the, uh, the process of, of, of uh, copying large volumes of data. And also, we have 24 seven support for Postgres deployment at uh, any scale from, from small to medium businesses to the largest enterprises. So as I mentioned earlier, Advanced Server is a true Oracle alternative. It's, it's deeply uh, compatible with Oracle in terms of data types, indexes, uh, partitioning, um, support for packages, views, triggers, um, and various uh, utilities um, that are compatible with, with their Oracle counterparts. Particularly for financial uh, industries where compliance is uh, a major um, issue um, and consideration, uh, we meet uh, the likes of the, the PCI regulations. Uh, the Advanced Server has FIPS 142 compliance, and there's a, um, a STIG guide um, for its secure implementation. Um, so some of the features required by PCI, uh, password policy management, and um, deep levels of all, all auditing, um, and data reduction, um, a feature that's uh, a um, costed option um, on Oracle Enterprise Edition.
also within the Oracle compatibility is over 200 um, of the most uh, prevalent um, uh, utility uh, functions and packages. Um, a number of the DBS functions and the util, uh, sorry, none of the DBS packages and the util packages are there that uh, will aid the, the translation from uh, transition from from Oracle to uh, Postgres and also allow um, developers to gradually ease themselves over continue developing um, Oracle PL SQL um, until if it's required that, that, that they then migrate uh, more fully to using um, Postgres functions and procedures uh, as opposed to uh, in, in PL PG SQL as opposed to PL SQL. So what are the benefits of that? Well, Obviously, your applications um, can um, continue to run less hindered um, uh, and uh, will operate with native Oracle uh, PL SQL support. Um, externally connecting applications can, can connect with OCI still. Um, and the benefits for the DBAs is that there's, there's, no, there's much less need to, to retrain because many of the Oracle features um, they see and love uh, are there um, and in any case Postgres um, and Oracle share a common um, uh, a common route they, they share much of their history so uh, they're obviously superficial differences but many um, DBAs Oracle DBAs will be instantly familiar with with Postgres and, and the provenance that uh, it has and again, the, the big motivation is that uh, as well as moving over to a, an open source uh, uh, world and model where innovation is, is, is part and parcel of, of the, um, the method, um, then uh, you lower costs and, and reduce risks um, because there's less risk to move. Moving your Oracle applications over to, to Postgres in the first instance and then um, carrying on running um, in an open source model. This is a just a quick um, quick summary of um, the Oracle compatibility um, with ad advanced server. Um, I think I mentioned the tools that EDB Plus and EDB Load are very similar to their, their counterparts. There's very, very strong compatibility with um, PL SQL. Um, and extensions to Oracle. Oracle deviate quite significantly in many areas from the various ANSI standards, um, but uh, many people have grown up with <laughs> those idiosyncrasies and, and uh, assumed to be the um, uh, the way way to do things. Um, so, for example, Oracle's treatments of nulls, um, the varchar two character, uh, and so forth. Um, all of the Oracle data dictionary views for um, uh, looking at the state of the database or the metadata about objects are there. Um, in the, the DBA might typically want to use DBA tables, DBA users and the like. Um, and we can also monitor the system and session weights in similar ways that you do with, with Oracle, uh, with, with stats pack uh, like reporting. And deep support for um, uh, various database, uh, various data types, blobs, clubs, um, XML types, RCHR2 and so forth. Part of the um, the process of, of migration is not just the migration of the data but also the, the connectivity so that's handled by um, drivers that are compatible with Oracle extensions to uh, JDBC, ODBC and .NET and we also have OCI uh, and ProC compatible drivers. Although ProC is, um, is rarely seen uh, these days. So this table shows um, the native capabilities of advanced server. Um, 
and the uh, Oracle um, editions also. So for example, on a database server, we see um, PostGIS. Um, there is, uh, there are known um, migration uh, methods from uh, Oracle Spatial to PostGIS, which I think the world now uh, considers is, is a superior uh, system to, to Oracle Spatial. Um, but obviously the, the code handling the, the spatial information will need to change to uh, the different idiom presented by uh, PostGIS. Uh, in addition to uh, Postgres is, is in itself a, a very secure database with native support for um, Kerberos authentication and the like. Um, but in addition to that, we uh, offer many of the, the features that Oracle have introduced, such as um, uh, password profiles, um, auditing, um, and data re redaction. Uh, we also um, provide a uh, a wrapping utility to obfuscate uh, PL SQL code, um, a virtual private database so that um, certain users can only see uh, records for which they, uh, they have uh, entitlement. And some of the utilities, for example, that, that DBAs might um, be familiar with. Um, uh, debugger for PL SQL, uh, SQL Profiler, uh, the loader and, 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 and SQL Plus compatible uh, utilities as well, and also Dynatune. So um, Advanced Server has a, a degree of self-tuning for uh, performing uh, at optimal levels given the resources of the machine. So that's one of the, the benefits that it's, it has over um, uh, standard Postgres. And the dynamic runtime Drita uh, instrumentation and tools architecture, uh, again, that um, gives you dynamic uh, information about the, uh, the state of the system. So before we come on to um, a quick demonstration of the um, portal, um, surprisingly enough, we've, we have um, some um, statistics from um, our 2020 uh, usage of the uh, the portal that 70% of all schemas had at least one reference to uh, uh, Pragma autonomous transaction. Um, so that's uh, in, in PL SQL blocks, you can define sections of that to be uh, an autonomous transaction. So that um, uh, Pragma instruction to the compiler is, is supported in, in EDB's PL um, SQL um, implementation. Um, 15% had at least one hint, and 36%, as you'd expect, referred to at least one of the um, support EDB supported Oracle packages. That's um, from 2.2 million DDL constructs uh, that were analyzed on the uh, migration portal. <clears throat> this is a table showing the um, the Oracle compatible database drivers that we, we provide and the features that they um, they support. Um, so you can see PL SQL support in JDBC, ADBC, .NET, and OCI, reference cursors. So a, um, a pretty comprehensive um, uh, level of support for those drivers. Again, that's a very large part of the migration equation um, in terms of once you've migrated the database, you still have uh, um, the clients that need to connect to what is essentially still um, uh, a running Oracle uh, database application um, that uh, happens to be running on uh, advanced server. We also have Pro C um, drivers that um, it's not mentioned on that chart. <clears throat> so compatibility with, with Oracle extends not just from the simple point of view of migrating schema um, or having done that the schema and the data uh, which takes you part of the way uh, but also the code the, the business logic that you have within the uh, the database itself in terms of packages procedures functions and triggers um, and then um, having done that you still need to be able to access the database so you then need the the api um, 
interfaces to be able to connect to the database, OCI, ODBC, and so forth. So that takes you almost the way there. And then having done that, you then need to carry on operationally um, with tools that are familiar to the Oracle community to run um, and administer their systems and keep them uh, up and running within um, uh, the expected um, service levels. Um, and also um, tools that are familiar with for Oracle um, database administrators and developers to, to use to, to continue to develop support uh, that platform. What makes a good migration candidate? Uh, well, any of the um, applications written in the um, darlings of the open source world at the moment, Hibernate and Spring. Um, and custom applications that are written uh, directly in PL SQL um, that include um, the usual um, procedures, functions, and packages uh, that you have the source code for. Um, and you have developers or access to the developers for those applications. Um, other things spring to mind as well, um, third party um, systems, off the shelf systems, custom off the shelf applications may also, uh, in many cases, the, the vendor itself um, has already migrated the application or provides a Postgres version of the application. Um, In the case of RAC, which is um, you know, technical tour de force in, in many uh, considerations and areas, um, but it has a variety of, uh, of uses that uh, are blurred with the, uh, the clusterware um, features of it. Um, so where RAC is being used for scaling, there's no real direct counterpart um, for um, that kind of um, use in Postgres. Uh, if it's used for high availability, that's a different matter. Um, and there are many um, ways to, to achieve similar in Postgres. Um, EDB's own um, failover manager um, is, has, has been used on many um, very large scale deployments to guarantee very high levels uh, of uptime. And then um, if there are operational uses of flashback, there's, a, there's no counterpart at all really with this in, in Postgres. So if the business uh, operational model um, has no need for flashback, then um, that makes it a good candidate. But if it, if it is the case that flashback is an inherent uh, uh, use for the, the, the business, then that, that becomes a feature that you'd be very dependent on. <clears throat> In order of uh, what are the more difficult targets, um, certain aspects of OCI, um, although in the main that's largely um, supported, and some uh, extensions to .NET and ODBC. Um, spatial XML, although you can translate um, spatial to uh, PostGIS, again, there'll have to be a migration with the application because uh, PostGIS doesn't present the same um, same programming model that, that Spatial does. Um, more difficult candidates, I mean, I stress that, the, that this is in terms of them necessarily being completely straightforward, but there's, um, <clears throat> there's usually a way uh, forward with most of these areas here. So ProC, um, there, um, there is a, an EDV ProC compatible interface, um, but it's perhaps not as, uh, as extensive as, as uh, um, PL SQL. Some of the behaviors within uh, PL SQL, uh, particularly uh, bulk collects, um, are handled slightly differently. Um, so although it doesn't change the logic, some of the pragmatics might need to be tested. Um, Store procedures, there's no support for Java stored procedures um, in, in Oracle, um, sorry, in Postgres. Um, I think that's a, a peculiarity uh, of Oracle. Um, and it's, it's a, a very nice feature, uh, but it's not without um, uh, having had uh, several big security risks over the years. Um, and 
if there are features of rack that are must-haves that don't map to obvious Postgres equivalences like uh, high availability, such as um, uh, <coughs> resource management in clusterware uh, and flashback, then uh, those are those are very difficult to migrate. And then there, there also may be other uh, Oracle proprietary extensions that that um, we haven't considered here. Um, So we like to make it my, easy to migrate from Oracle to Postgres. Um, there are a number of migration tools that are in the, uh, the kit bag for any, uh, anyone planning a project to migrate. The first pass is to take your application or uh, on a schema basis and use the migration portal, which is a cloud-based tool. Um, for migrating um, uh, the schema, uh, including the, the data, uh, sorry, including the, um, the GDL for all the tables and views and uh, procedures, packages and functions and triggers. Um, the full scale toolkit for doing that, for performing a migration is the EDB migration toolkit. So this is available um, with the product installation, either on Linux or Windows. Um, and you run a migration from a source Oracle database um, to a target Postgres database, um, and you can migrate um, just the, uh, the schema uh, with no data or migrate both at the same time, or in a process of stepwise refinement, um, continue to um, migrate the schema. If you have a large amount of data, um, remedy any um, issues that are found in that in that migration until you have a recipe for a hundred percent migration, um, and then and then and then migrate the data. And um, for large uh, amounts of data, um, we can turn off um, Postgres logging um, <coughs> to to speed up the, uh, the, uh, the the copying and also use OCI uh, in preference to JDBC, which is a much more efficient uh, mechanism for copying data from Oracle. The larger databases, uh, volumes of data, they may take a significant amount of time um, to, to copy, um, particularly as it's over uh, networks and essentially these are set up on a, an ad hoc basis, um, given that there's going to be little scope for actually um, uh, <coughs> tuning the, um, uh, the IO from uh, a complete extraction of the, the schemas to the target database. So this may take some time um, and this gives much less of a window for uh, doing the migration over um, a weekend and, and minimizing the uh, amount of downtime that's acceptable to, to, the, to the operation. The solution to this is to use Replication Server which um, shares a lot of commonality in, in the libraries that it uses with um, the migration toolkit and this allows uh, for change data capture for large migrations um, so that we can use that to minimize the downtime it takes to do the migration so for example you can uh, in the background uh, migrate uh, the entire application um, with all its data it may take several hours or days even to to do that and then the source and target database can be kept in, in sync um, with, with um, replication server. <coughs> and the cutoff point um, can then occur very quickly um, uh, by switching uh, over to the new uh, the Postgres instance. Um, and indeed that process can, can carry on in the background so you can migrate and, and test against um, the, new, the, the mechanisms for changeover and also the application support for the new database and then repeat the process um, uh, until you're ready to actually do the, uh, the switch over um, of the production systems in real time. Um, we can add into that mix as well the um, Postgres Enterprise Manager for monitoring um, the, the instances which will also show you uh, the status of uh, a failover manager cluster. Um, 
uh, failover manager can um, uh, quite happily um, implement some of the uh, the reasons for rack in terms of, uh, of high availability uh, similarly it provides a, a virtual ip address that will fail over to whichever is the current um, primary node and um, this also allows uh, for large levels of uptime um, in that um, elective failovers can be done to a standby node while the must while the primary is up, up, up upgraded for example uh, operating system or database upgrade and then um, switched over and back again to upgrade the uh, the new standby nodes so in summary we have um, a migration portal to do um, which is uh, a free web-based tool so the cost of um, in terms of uh, uh, setup and finding resources equipment to do it is is, is negligible um, so it's a web-based um, tool that will assess uh, give you an idea of, of the likely success of migrating your oracle schemas um, and it converts the oracle objects to uh, edb postgres advanced server um, and generates a script that you can use to then uh, deploy uh, that migrated instance. The migration toolkit is uh, the, the actual tool that um, performs um, uh, the uh, bulk migrations. Um, it gives you uh, a much finer level of control um, over uh, the schema and data migration, also in terms of uh, what method is used to, uh, to copy the data. Uh, be it uh, JDBC, OCI, uh, and it will migrate from uh, the target, migrate from the source Oracle database to a target uh, advanced server instance. And this is likely to be the tool that you would actually use for um, performing the migration. For complex migrations, um, we see that the majority of, of, of um, uh, for example, PL SQL will migrate uh, without change um, to uh, EDB advanced server um, but for more complex migrations um, or um, migrations that uh, you know you, you, you might need assistance because you are short staffed um, then we offer migration services um, and the migration services uh, include uh, migration assessment um, and the services team run their own uh, migration assessment tool um, and the outcome of the, uh, the output of that is a, is a series of reports that will guarantee um, the success of the migration so we will stand by um, uh, achieving a successful migration to uh, advanced server uh, and then we you, you can either perform that migration yourself or, or have us do it So this is what the migration portal looks like. We'll have a quick look at it in a second if there's, there's, there's time remaining. Um, and it, it's a quick way to uh, just assess um, the likelihood um, of uh, a, a migration from your um, uh, applications to uh, advanced server. Um, it uses a, a DDL extraction script, you upload the DDL on a schema basis and then you run it and it analyzes the results and you can then uh, interact with the output to, to, to change the um, and reassess uh, the migration. Um, so I think this is also moving forwards to um, be more integrated with the tools that, that uh, um, our services team use as well. Um, so it's benefiting from the, the, the rich knowledge that they've gained in over 10 years of, of migrations. <clears throat> Another part of um, a successful migration is, is, is obviously support for the, uh, the platform that you migrate to. Um, so one thing that sets CDB apart is uh, world-class support. Um, it's 24 seven and, and follows the sun model. Um, and it's expert technical support for everything Postgres and obviously advanced server and Oracle migrations and support for uh, running your Oracle compatible 
um, systems on advanced server. We also offer a remote DBA service to um, uh, administer um, those instances for you. And uh, there is also the possibility of having a, a, a cloud DBA service of the instances that you have in um, AWS, um, uh, Google Cloud or, or Azure, we can administer those as well for you. Uh, there's also the possibility of a technical account manager um, who provides proactive assistance in getting the most uh, return on in your investment in EDB products, services, and support. Okay, so let's see if we can have a quick look at the, um, the portal. Right, okay, so here we have a um, quick view in SQL Developer. Um, and this is the, the standard uh, Oracle HR schema with the ever familiar countries, uh, employees, uh, job ID, and the ever important salary. Um, we've added to this just to make it a little bit more interesting. Um, uh, a package does some operations um, of uh, limited real world interest, but nevertheless, it's to demonstrate the um, fact that they will be migrated. And we've also added a couple of uh, procedures for good measure. Okay, so what we then have to do um, is go to the migration portal. And then we download the EDB DDL extractor in there. Go back to SQL Developer and uh, I'll open one of uh, loaded earlier and you can look through this script and see that it's not doing anything nefarious that you wouldn't want to send uh, information to uh, an, another party. Um, we run this script it just advises you first of all that um, you have to have connect resource and select catalog roles so I'm running it as the uh, system user so I do have that. And then you give it a list of the schemas that you want to uh, extract the DDL for, which you're going to consider migration. And the location of the output file, then the downloads, actually. And do I want to get this? So many, uh, in many cases, the uh, schemas may uh, be dependent on objects in other schemas. And do we want to resolve those um, references and extract those objects as well. In this instance, we're, we're not going to do that. So it runs through each of those different areas, generating the DDL. Moving through the foreign keys now, extracting reviews, triggers, functions, procedures. 
packages. And it's finished. And it gives you a uh, quick summary of the, um, the schemas for which you've successfully extracted objects, uh, only HR in this case, uh, what time it completed. Um, and uh, a few notes about the kind of things that it won't uh, actually be able to extract. Okay, so that's generated a file for us in um, my downloads. Uh, directory so I'm going to then go back to the migration portal We're about five minutes left Simon just to okay. head up okay very quickly I can create a new project I shall call it um, webinar and I've migrated from Oracle 12C to Postgres Advanced Server 12. Um, what I've done um, is create, so um, there's the one. I've deliberately created um, a view that will have uh, a type that's not, um, a function rather that's not supported so we can see what remedial action we can take. So we do create and assess. <clears throat> so we see that one object has failed, um, 27 have been repaired uh, and 11 have passed. Um, so things like um, tables here, you can see um, Things like uh, primary keys, that they can be in a state of uh, being enabled or disabled um, in, in Oracle. Um, and these um, Postgres only supports, uh, what well, doesn't support uh, such a, um, a, a mechanism. So um, that's been repaired by eliminating the enable um, clause there. And let me just go back to, so this is the view here that's failed and I've added these extra um, procedures and packages uh, and views. So, so the, the packages and procedures have all um, migrated um, successfully. And the view which failed is this error view, which I've added, which Oracle has this um, uh, bit and um, function that's not supported uh, in, in Postgres. So I can then go on my um, global search and see, uh, I could do a search, but I can see it's there. Let's see, what do I do for bit and? Um, so I have two possibilities, either I can create um, a similar function um, uh, and use that um, as a literal, um, uh, literal replacement, um, or I can use the, um, the native um, post, Postgres operator, uh, which is which is the AND um, operator. There we go. So I can replace um, this bit AND operation here with my and operator and reassess. Okay, so then that's that's completed the assessment. It's now completely passed. And I go back to um, my project and then I can migrate that to an existing advanced server instance and select the schemas that I want to migrate. I've only got the HR schema and then generate um, a SQL file, which I can then um, load into PLPG SQL, for example. Um, sorry, load into PG Admin um, and use to migrate the, uh, the database. So it gives you a summary of 
um, the, um, the steps that were taken in the migration uh, and what actions were, were taken. So you can then review um, the process of migration. So this is um, this is but a one method to uh, do a, um, an easy assessment of the possibility of, of migrating your applications. The uh, more technical in-depth um, migration toolkit is what you probably use um, in practice to migrate uh, bulk and large scale um, uh, projects. So uh, 